Hi guys, it's Amy with Aim to Plan, and today I am here to talk day-to-day -day expense tracking. So I have switched to a new layout for budget planning in September. It is a lined vertical planner. Um, it is actually this planner right here, um, the Tiny Florals Planner. It's from 2024. It says 2024. Was it a 12 month planner? It was a 12 month planner. I, I, I've been saying it 18 month, but it's a 12 month planner that was for 2024. Um, and so it's on the last couple of months um, before it becomes basically an outdated planner. Um, and so this is kind of what it looks like. This is the monthly layout. This is the divider, isn't it? Super cute. All right. So yeah, I think that what I'm going to do is try to set up my like expense tracking for September. I am using the lined vertical, I think for the first time. I don't know if I've actually used it before. I have been trying to watch some videos for budgeting. Um, and I know that for example, Mojo Jojo from Mojo Jojo Plans, she was using a lined vertical for a while, but I'm still going to try to adapt this to make it sen make sense for me. And so for this first week, September 2nd through the 8th, I think what I'm going to do is try both methods. And so I'm going to talk about two methods in this video. I'll try them both out and we'll see which one works better. And so what I'm going to do is go back here somewhere. Let's see if I can find the extra pages that I've got. I don't know if I've got extra pages, honestly. I'm just realizing that this is a an 18 month, uh, not, not an 18 month planner, it's a 12 month planner. So I'm just going to pull a random page. Um, and so this random page right here is for, um, I don't know which month, it was for August. Okay, so I just pulled a random page out. Um, hopefully I'll remember that I pulled that out because, you know, it, it will be, I will be shocked when it's missing later. But anyway, I am going to basically set up two um, options here. This actually works out really well um, to be able to do two options. I've done this for some of my other planners where I've tried to do multiple planners in one. And so for any kind of like vertical layout like this, whether it's line vertical, vertical, the old faith layout, color block, any of those, um, if you're using the same layout, like if it's the same planner, you can absolutely do this to be able to get more pages in. Um, and so it's kind of like a Dutch door method for putting two options, in my case, two options here for the same week. Um, and so we're just gonna play around with it, like I said. So first step here is in order to make this kind of work, what I do is very simply just trim off the date, all right? Um, I've mentioned in multiple previous videos how I basically um, took a letter size um, planner and made it undated. And so this is kind of how I did that. I just trimmed off the top, right? So trimmed off the top, just like that, right? And now it's in here. Um, and so it blends just like you can see, it blends in really well, but I do get basically option one and option two and it's for the same week. So that's like, to me, a really cool way of doing it. Um, if you wanted to try to get like additional, like maybe daily pages in here, this is a great way of doing it as well. You're able to get daily pages in here as many as you need. Uh, since it's disbound, you don't have to worry about, you know, having to make that decision for how many pages, or you could just cut the pages all at one time and just kind of move them um, from week to week if you don't use it. So it's a great method, like I said. Um, you can also, especially for the line vertical, I did this at one point, you can cut off this like right here um, and use this top part as like your master overview and then just use the bottom as like journaling space. That's a great way of doing it too. So anyway, all that to say, I now have two options in here, basically option one, and option two and I am like I said going to try both of them for this week September 2nd through 8th and see which one I like better um, so what I'm going to do though is set up both of them so option number one is I'm going to basically have it where it is going to be just by day all right and so my options here all right I'm going to use a pencil for this um, and I have to erase all this later but let's just say for example on Monday I go to Walmart right? And I spend a certain dollar amount, let's just say $50, all right? One of the things that I want to do with this Walmart is at some point basically color code it um, or mark which category it comes from. And so what I think I'll do is actually use highlighter or another pen and just kind of highlight through it um, with highlighter, okay? When I have calculated that that has come out of a particular 
account. Um, so like when it's cleared my bank and when it's marked off as like maybe this $50 was a planner and so I need to move that to my personal category, I would mark it like that. Now for me, sometimes I buy a lot and so I don't actually remember which, um, which place it comes from and so I might have to put a note to myself that says personal and then I can go back in and color code it. So it would basically um, take up three lines. I also sometimes like to put what it is. So this one, I'll just put like, maybe it's the Disney 100 planner, All right? So I'll put that in there. And so it might take up four or five lines, right? I'm just going to guesstimate that four lines is like kind of the, the normal for me. Okay. And so with that being said, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, 26 is not divisible by four, but basically 24 is. And that gives me basically six, six spots for tracking things, okay? And so that is there. Now for me, one of the things that I do, even on both options, um, is like if I spend $50, but $20 was for personal and $30 was for something else, I will put Walmart, $50, then I'll put 20 or like put a little mark that says it was split. And then I would put $20 personal and then $30 for, you know, Sophia. All right. Just as an example, sorry for my messy handwriting too, but um, I don't want to like actually write right in here. <laughs> All right. So that would be how I would designate it. And again, this would be color like highlighted personal, and this would be a different color for Sophia. And they would be highlighted when it got pulled out of my budget. Okay. And so that's kind of what I think for option one, again, every, every item would be, you know, just tracked with its day. I would get the option probably around five or six. Maybe if I don't write as much, it could be up to seven, but definitely not more than that um, in each column for how many expenses I have for that day. All right. And so I think five, generally speaking, is a lot already for me. So having six or seven is totally fine. All right. So that is option one. All right. I think that's a good option, actually, if I'm especially if I'm going to come back in and color code. But I'm also going to consider option two. Now, option two is going to be a little bit different in that instead of doing it by day, like I was in option one, what I would do instead is have categories. So this category, for example, would be food. This one would be my personal expenses. Right here could be like, let's say Sophia. Then this could be gifts. This could be travel or vacation. Um, this could be kids or education. Um, and then it would be health. All right, those are the big ones for me. I do have a couple of other ones related to like bills, home, car service, and gas. But those I could just kind of maybe put on the sidebar because I don't I don't actually travel that much, um, and I don't get my car serviced that often. And home is that category is for like repairs and maintenance of the house, and so I don't it, it doesn't go in here. Um, and then bills, um, I have all of that on auto pay. And so I do need to know when my bills are coming out, but I don't actually track it as a day to day expense. So these are my basically my seven categories that are like the common ones, really the only one that is not a, it would be gas. Okay, so that would be eight. But what I would do here is with these categories. So instead of having like September 2nd be here for food, I might, for example, eat, go somewhere, let's just say on the fourth, right now I went to um, I'm going to say McDonald's, all right? And I spent $15 at McDonald's, right? I would just put that in here. Now, this actually helps a lot because I'm able to see the entire column and be able to track my weekly expenses for that entire category very easily. I don't have to color code or do any of those things. And so I do prefer this method. The problem that I'm going to anticipate is that I'm going to have a ton of food and a ton of personal, maybe a lot for Sophia. She likes to shop a lot, but I might not have anything for gifts, travel. You know, these are like less common ones. Same for gas, right? These are very uncommon categories for me. And so I don't know that I would need that many categories, especially every single week, you know? So how would I adapt this? I think maybe the thing that would work is if I moved, I'm just talking out loud, you guys. All right. What if I moved these categories and just used gas, gifts, travel, kids, education, and health, those, those basically those one, two, three, four, five, six categories. And I would just kind of stick them to the side here. If I need them, I would use them. Um, but I'm going to give myself 
should I give myself two columns for each of these? For food, personal, Sophia. Hmm. I feel like that would be too much room. All right. Let me... Okay, I think this might work. Okay, so if I don't put the categories in, let's just say I know that I have these categories, but if I don't spend gifts in a week, then I don't have it with a, an entirely blank column, right? So I'm going to put food here. And then instead of putting personal right here, I'm going to leave Sophia, right? And so food would be this column and this column. This would both be food, right? Sophia needs to stay in one column. She cannot buy more than that, all right? Then I'll start personal here right and then write until I need to give myself an, uh, another line and then as the week kind of wraps up if I am like have added all these other columns and need another column I can use this column if food hasn't taken it over okay to me that makes sense but we'll, we'll see how this works right what I'm going to do is do this method right here where it's food for two columns then it's going to be I'm going to put Sophia. I'm going to put Sophia here. Then I'll start. I'll actually, what I will do, actually, this, this will be it. Okay. I'm only, okay, for sure, I'm going to put food for two columns, at least at the beginning of the week. Okay. And I always like food to be first. All right. So I'm going to put food here for sure. In pin, set in stone. Okay. And I'm going to track food in this one column. If it runs into the next column, that is fine. But I will... For the remaining columns, including personal, including Sophia, including gas, travel, gifts, kids, education, health, all of these other categories, the only one I'm going to put down is food. The other categories, whichever one comes next in terms of a purchase, I'll put here and I'll just add categories until I run out of space. And then if I need to take back a column, it will be this column that I have saved at the beginning of the week for food. Okay, that sounded super complicated in my head, but I actually like that method more. So we will see how that works as we go through. Again, for September 2nd through the 8th, I will do both ways. I will track all expenses on this option one. I will also flip the page and track it as a categories like it has right here, and we'll see which one works better, right? This method, the option two, feels a lot more like a cash envelope system, you know? So I don't know, I just feel like I would like this more, but we will see as we go on. Oh, if you do these categories, then you can write the beginning amount, you know? So, yeah, I just, I don't know, I just really like this more. Um, I just feel like I need more pages though, so we will see. Um, yeah, it could be that I like, I like this so much, but I like having the doubles. The, like double page here that I just give each one two columns. Ooh, that is an idea as well. Okay, so lots of ideas just kind of popping in my head, but we will try this for one week with option one and option two. We'll see, I think maybe at the end of the week or beginning of the next week in September, if I chose one or not. And if I did, how I adapted it. So just be on the lookout for that video. I have made all these notes in pencil um, and I'll leave them here. For right now but in, when I get in there and start writing pen I'll probably erase some of this stuff um, and we'll see which one works so this was mostly me just talking out loud to you guys um, but hopefully it made sense what I said um, and hopefully you can kind of see the vision for how I'm using the lined vertical I am still looking for lined vertical budget planning videos so if there's anyone out there who's a happy planner who uses a lined vertical or a, a similar planner it doesn't have to be happy planner but if you knew something similar to this um, let me know what you're doing or pop a video down below so I can watch it um, I would love to be able to watch it to get inspiration um, yeah so like I said it was me mostly talking but I hope you got something from this video if you enjoyed this video do give it a thumbs up if you haven't done so already subscribe to my channel and until the next video bye guys